Hi, welcome, and I hope you're doing well. Here I have the MSI Aegis gaming desktop. This run on the Intel i5 processor. Let me apologize about the angle on the camera. I do not have enough space to film on this video here. So you may see that the computer on a sideways position. I uh, just want to apologize in advance for that. And let me show you the model number here. So if you tilt at the bottom of the desktop, you can see that this says Aegis SE10SI. Okay, so this is the model. And uh, I can't really show you the front because there's not enough space to show that. And let me somewhat show you the back of it. So the, the very top here is your power supply. If you slide it down a little bit, here comes your motherboard, the back of the motherboard. This is the exhaust fan. And if you go further down, this is your graphics card. Okay, so what I like to do here in this video, I like to take things apart to show you what is what is inside the computer. And kind of give you a guidance on how to upgrade stuff if you need to. Uh, or maybe do a replacement parts. Okay, so uh, at the bottom here on the side panel, it has a Phillips screwdriver. And oh, sorry, it has a Phillips screw. All you need to have is a Phillips screwdriver to remove the two screws. So I already removed one of the screw. Let me go ahead and remove the second. Once you remove the two screws, what you can do is you want to slide the computer to your left. So the side panel will just come straight up. Alright, so it's very basic. The internal part of the MSI um, does not fully built and the wiring is not hidden behind the other side of the, uh, the panel, which is a very bad idea. Um, I don't like the cable hanging in the front here where the panel supposed to be see-through so this is a see-through panel you can see what is inside and obviously nothing to show off all the cables dangling around anyway let's move forward this is your power supply okay for this model here the power supply is HA350 it seems to be running on a 350 watt on this power supply you can actually upgrade to a larger one if you want to upgrade to 650 or 850 you're more than happy to do that it is all compatible this is a regular power supply it runs on a uh, uh, there's an 8 pin here for the CPU and this is um, the regular type of the ATX power supply alright so let me go ahead and start taking things apart and show you what you can do to upgrade things okay so here you can see that this is the graphics card. So this graphics card here, let's go ahead and remove this 8 pin connector. 6 and 2, so 8 total. Remove that. Flip open the, the, the clipper on this side. Oh, you actually need to remove the screw. So let's go ahead and remove the screw first. So the computer has a built-in Wi-Fi. Once you remove that three screws, you can actually go ahead and press this little clipper right here. This is the PCIe clipper. I'm not sure if you can see it. Let me show it to you using this one. So this is the clipper. Push it down. That is to unlock the PCIe Express card. And go ahead and remove by lifting up the graphics card. Just lift it up. Alright, again, let me point it out one more time. This is the clipper. This clipper clipper right here is to hold on to the graphics card you need to push it down first then the graphics card can come off okay so this graphics card here let me see what does it say this is a GE Force GTX 1660 super okay so it runs on an 8 pin graph uh, 8 pin connector and you can upgrade your graphics card if you want or if your graphics card is dead or not working then um, you can replace this graphics card Alright, so this one here at the bottom is actually a Wi-Fi. Okay, so this has the built-in Wi-Fi. And where does the Wi-Fi go? It goes into this Wi-Fi card here. 
So if your Wi-Fi card is bad, you can replace by removing this screw and that's how you remove the Wi-Fi. Now this is the uh, USB 3 uh, connector. It's supposed to connect to the motherboard. I wasn't sure why it was unplugged. And you can actually plug it back in by pushing it down. Now you see the USB 3.0, there's a little clipper, not a clipper, like a, uh, like a connector that, that the safety clip, you need to follow where the clip is, okay? Most of the time the clip face towards the motherboard, not away from the motherboard, towards the motherboard. Find the right clipper and go ahead and push it in. And that's how you install that USB 3.0 for the front of your desktop. Here is a DDR4. Go ahead and push the two side DDR4 and that's how you pop the RAM up. Once the RAM is popped up, go ahead and remove the RAM. This RAM here runs on a DDR4 RPG, uh, XPG and it has 8 gigs, 8 and 8, so 16 total. You can upgrade to uh, 32, meaning you have a 16 and 16, let's upgrade to 32 gigs of RAM. This is your mini exhaust, uh, 90 millimeter exhaust fan. You can increase up to, nope, you cannot increase. This is, this is the, uh, the, uh, the exhaust fan, but you can do an intake right here. So if you need more airflow, you can install a 120 millimeter fan um, in the front here as an intake for the cold air to come in. Now, there's no mounting bracket or anything but you can still install by using a zip tie. Put it, put a fan in and then zip tie it to tie it down. This is your power supply. To remove the power supply, you need to remove the four screws and that would be the four screws in the back here. Okay. So if your computer is not powering on and if you feel like there was a power outage, uh, if you heard like a burn smell and the smell is coming from the power supply, or maybe like there was a, a search and you felt like the search might have damaged the power supply uh, you can first thing to try is to you know if the computer doesn't turn on uh, try to change the power supply maybe the motherboard is still good but then the power supply just got burned out right so there are four screws that holds on to the power supply go ahead and remove the four screws once you remove the four screws there's a little clipper right here push it down and slide the power supply to your right and that's how you somewhat uh, remove it a little bit. Actually, you need to. Uh, what you need to do is to you need to uh, cut all the wires, right? Uh, zip tied because it's already zip tied. You need to cut them, and then that's how you remove the whole power supply out. In this video here, I'm not going to remove the power supply. I just wanted to show you. Uh, that's what you need to do if you need uh, need to replace the power supply. Okay, let's go ahead and put it back in so to put it back you need to slide it in first just be careful do not clip your finger I know that it might be a uh, not that difficult once you slide in then you can just the clipper you push far enough the clipper will just go back in so the next thing I'd like to explain to you is the CPU. If you feel like your CPU is overheating, uh, maybe you want to check with your thermal paste. It might have been dried out. So it's good to apply a new thermal paste and clean it out from time to time. Uh, maybe down the road, like, I don't know, two years. Maybe if you have owned the computer, uh, if it's dusty, take it apart and just dust it, clean it up. So the four screws doesn't come out. You can just loosen up the screw. Once the screw is, is loose, you can lift the thing up. As you can see that the thermal paste is still moist on my side of it. So if your thermal paste is dry, what you want to do is uh, get one of these alcohol wipes. So this just a regular alcohol wipes. Wipe it down on both sides, the CPU fan and the uh, CPU used, used this uh, thermal paste, the MX-4 uh, or any thermal paste you like. Just apply a good amount of CPU on it and then the, uh, uh, the heat sink. Okay. So what else I'd like to explain to you? Oh yeah, if you want to install the, um, 
So this one runs on a 2.5 inch SSD drive. Let me put the CPU back in first. Oops, I think I need to uh, lift the uh, the other the other side of it. So the bracket on the CPU just drop. In other words, I need to push from the other side in to screw to screw in the CPU back. So this is the bracket for the CPU that goes on the other side of it. It just dropped. So let me go ahead and realign them back together. Okay, and I put my CPU in. So the better cable management is to hide the cable on the other side of the uh, uh, the panel, like on this side of the panel. Okay, that would be the better part to hide your cables, uh, not in the front here. So if you want to do that, this is the opportunity for you to do. So this computer here runs on the uh, 2.5 inch uh, SATA drive. You need to remove the other side of the panel to get to your hard drive, okay? Now you can remove the uh, 2.5 inch uh, SSD drive. If you want to upgrade to a larger one, you can. Or if you want to install the uh, uh, M.2 solid uh, SSD drive, the NVMe, you can do that on this motherboard. So you see this slot right here. This slot right here allows you to install the M.2 NVMe SSD drive. You need to remove the screw, slide it in, and then put the screw back in. Of course, you need to have the Windows uh, 10 USB installer disk or the USB to, to install it. Anyway, uh, this is a simple teardown. I'm not sure if I covered most of your questions in this video here uh, in regards to what you want to upgrade or what you want to see in here for um, the teardown process. Okay, I know that the video is not a very well completed, um, a very well completed video I uh, apologize in advance um, I'm not in the right mind today I'm just all over the place today today is Monday for me uh, apologizing that anyway um, if you feel like this video is helpful again I'll ask for a small favor by liking the video smash the like button uh, subscribe to my channel if you feel like uh, this really helps you and uh, comment below if you have any question I'm more than happy to make uh, other videos to uh, uh, to, to answer those questions. So, alright, take care now. Good luck with your repair. Bye-bye.